There we go. Well, right. like we were saying, congratulations on on Baja Staircase. Two weeks. Well, it came in at number two. It's still at number two, and um, there's no foul there, thanks to Taylor Swift. But um, what what amazed me about the top three was that the top five albums are are legacy acts. You've got the Stones, you've got Duran Duran, and yourselves. So <laughs> it's a bizarre time to be in music, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it is quite quite incredible, really. I mean, you know, we're in this sort of crazy postmodern era now, where all genres and 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 uh, and bands of certain ages uh, can, can all sort of coexist from yeah. from all the different age groups, because you, you know, in this sort of postmodern era, all you have to do is, you know, all all genres can exist. As all you have to do is try to do something something good in your genre and people will accept it you know yeah. and and it's and one thing that's amazed me over the sort of last decade really is that is that when uh, concerts now we're not just playing to to people who discovered us who were kind of the same age as as yeah. us you know who have followed us from the very early day the the, the audience spans you know, several generations really which is um quite remarkable to us when we look out into the crowd i remember i remember uh, we were at a gig um, we did a gig um it was a, in america not long ago and i looked down and and there's these there's this couple they were in they were like must have been 2021 and i could see them singing along with all our songs and i thought okay well we're going to do a deep dive in a minute to a to a b-side <laughs> from electricity i'm sure they're not going to know the lyrics to that one <laughs> but sure enough, they knew every word. <laughs> Andy and I looked at each other. Who was clocking? He was clocking them as well. That's brilliant. Wow, this is kind of strange, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What I what I love about that is that obviously you know you've you know this is not your first rodeo. You've been doing this for more years than we we liked to admit in polite company. But you know it, it you must look for things that uh, make it fun for you. You know and you know and Andy because obviously doing this you know multiple times and obviously yes each time it's different different audience and different energy but to keep it fun for yourselves I mean you just started a, a brilliant example of how you do that yeah yeah I mean we we do um I mean I think that you know the older you get the, the more the tra more the traveling becomes you know, mm. you know quite have the same energy levels but what we do is we try to conserve our energy during the day so that uh, in the evening we give it a hundred percent, you know. Yeah. So um, and and every show is is in, we treat every show like it's it, like it's the first night of the tour, you know, and um and we put everything everything into our show because you know that's it, it's our only chance to kind of get to, to have a connection with the people who who have listened to our, and enjoyed our music over the over the decades, you know, mm, mm. and uh, and that that in. It, in an, in an of itself is a joy, you know, to to see to see you know smiley faces. We we'll play a song that you know, and someone because you know songs are like time capsules, aren't they? They capture yeah. moments of your of your life. You connect um, memories and events of your life to songs, and, and and sometimes you look into the audience, and obviously you know we, we, one song, the song that we're playing at that moment has has resonated in a deep emotional way with someone, and it's like you see tears streaming down their face, and they go. Yeah, they will yeah. a big emotional connection to that person. They're 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 being trying in some way a loss of you know, a person or or you know or an important impact their life. You know, so I mean yeah. that's the power of music, and and that's what I love about music. You know, mm. that's because I have I have the same experience when I go and see I go and see a band. You know, Andy and I went to see Kraftwerk not long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were playing um, all their albums at, at the Modern um, Museum in, in um, the Tate Modern in, in London, they're playing mm -hmm. a different album every night. And we went to um, Radioactivity, we went to a couple, but oh, to Radioactivity. Wow. And there was a moment where, you know, because they played the whole album, and that was seminal to Andy yeah. and I. You know, that was that album was blue for Owen. And, and Andy was like shaking me, going, "I'm back in your mom's back room when we were 17." <laughs> <laughs> and, and isn't that the power of music? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and that's the joy. So, <clears throat> but um, <laughs> touching on um, on Baja Staircase, um, Andy, let's slip that you're a bit of a hoarder. 
and you tend to go, you know, you, you tend to go, well, no idea is ever thrown out and it's, it's kind of parked. Um, and I was just thinking besides the pandemic reality where obviously everybody got thoroughly bored, um, what, what incited you to go digging and uh, pulling out some of the, you know, the, the, the frameworks, I suppose, of some of the tracks that appear on, on Baja Staircase? Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, the pandemic was a strange time for everyone. And um, all of a sudden we had masses of time on our hands, which was quite unusual for us because we were always, we're a bit sort of workaholic like, and we, you know, we were always busy doing something. And all, all of a sudden we had masses of time on our hands. We couldn't do anything that we wanted to do. Cool. So, um, so Andy, Andy got more bored than I, I was stuck in the south of France, not being able to uh, leave France, which, you know, in the south of Terrible. France, there's worse places Terrible. to be stuck in a yeah. pandemic. You know? Absolutely. So, I... <laughs> first world problem. Andy, Andy was in Liverpool. Andy was in Liverpool. <laughs> We're first world problems, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Andy was kind of in Liverpool, and his, most of his family were there. Mm. And he just kept phoning me up and texting me, saying, "Bored. <laughs> I'm bored. I want to do something." So he said, "Have you got anything?" So I said, "Yeah, I'll I'll go, looking. <laughs> I'll go looking." And um, and of course, I have plenty of time on my hands. So I, you know, I fortunately I was down in the south of France with all my hard drives. Oh wow! Uh, which is not always the case that I carry all my hard drives. On. So I had, I had all, all my with me, and um, I just started digging and and finding things that I, I barely remembered doing, mm. and um, and and then I just started sort of feeding Andy, uh, you know, ideas, because, I mean, you know, we treat it like, we treat music like a, a painter would treat um, a canvas, you know, you'll start a painting, can't, can't find a way to sort of finish it or have the final idea to finish it. So, you know, a lot of artists will have just stacks of canvases of half finished works in the corners. And, and that's kind of what we, we are with me. The, 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 you know, so, um, so we'll kind of go through, uh, is it, so, so, you know, if it's a good idea, we'll catalog it. Mm. Uh, but, you know, my archiving isn't that great. So I, I tend to forget things, forget where I put things, or most important, what the name of that thing was, because, <laughs> you, you know, you, you have so many ideas. And, uh, and, you know, they're called Idea 29, you know, and you go on Idea 54, and you go, well, I have no idea what that is, you know. So <laughs> you, you have to to just it. kind of listen to everything everything mm. and uh and and you know i found that you know i went around a real deep dive found some interesting stuff and you know I, I quite quite a lot of those uh things i found were the sort of the sort of blue for um for anthropocene and for varushka and for healing and a number of other things so mm, mm, mm. so yeah so i was feeding andy just to keep to keep him keep back quiet. basically yeah, exactly yeah, work on that work on that i'm going back to the pool <laughs> <laughs> no different than to a child, yes. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. you're, you're heading to to our shores again, and um, can't say, uh, you know, well, can't really articulate just how excited I think people are to to welcome you back. But my fear is that you are coming to us straight off the back of um, having played the O2, and. Um, you know, so my question is, how how different in your mind would that show, which is obviously on a gargantuan scale, to you know then coming off that high, coming into South Africa, and then being able to, you know, um, power through that because it it it's going to be a, a mind shift, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, we're we're I mean. First of all, we're really excited to come back. I mean, it's been, um, we've been trying to come back um, for, you know, the last seven or eight years, really. Mm -hmm. um, but but there's been always reasons why we couldn't. And 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 then, you, you know, we wanted to come back right after the pandemic, because uh, mm -hmm. we got offered uh, shows then. Uh, but then freighting costs, flights and freighting costs, because people were trying to make up for lost income, yeah. freighting costs like quadrupled, and we need—we're we're, not—we have very bespoke equipment that we have to bring with us, and so, yeah. 
it, it just meant we had a massive, massive loss on our hands to come over. And we thought, well, let's just wait for a time when we can actually come over. We don't really care about making a profit, but we don't really like losing money. No, no, um, no. So, uh, uh, so we're so happy to be able to 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 come and play play to the South African people again because you know the, our experience of the last shows was was amazing. You know the crowds were incredible. Um, yeah, but we we you know we'll we'll still be even though we're coming off the back of a very big tour, mm. um, we'll still be interested and um because uh, we've got a good few weeks off before we come and uh and excited i mean we you see as a band we treat every concert like it's the first concert of the tour because every every show i mean i, I can't stand bands that 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 just just look at their audience as a generic audience yeah you know and it's that such generic audience every night no it's not these are people who are kids yeah. and and they it's a one-off experience for them yeah you, you know you can't just treat it like another night on tour. No. It's, it's a one-off show, and yeah. and so you have to treat it like a one-off show. All our concerts we treat like like that, mm. and we put in a hundred percent effort into into every show. Mm. And uh, and so I think people, I think I think you know um, the South African audience will, will will love the show because you know we're we're playing better than ever. Mm. You know we're, we're we're not bored with playing live. We love it. Mm. You know. It's, it's that one time when you can just make have a, have that connection with your people who enjoy your music, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, um, I so, mean, yeah, you... we're very excited. Yeah, um, just just one last question, if I may, because I know your time is at a premium. Um, but when when you listen back to the new album, um, what about the new album excites you the most? Um. <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, I, what what excites me the most is <laughs> no, don't worry. I've had dogs all my life. Um, yeah. What excites? I mean, the thing the thing is, an album. Um, it's not until sort of six months after after it's released. Do you really know what you've done? Yeah. Um, because you're so you know you listen to the tracks and you go. Hmm, Maybe that kick drum could have been a bit louder. Mm. Maybe, maybe I should have done another harmony in that part. Mm. You know, and and you still you don't you hear the parts, but not the overall impression. You know, yeah. at some point we you know you have to let it go and and deadline thing for letting it go. You know, and uh, and I'm kind of responsible for mixing God. So mm -hmm. for the last sort of uh, <clears throat> well. Or for the beginning of the year, for the first sort of four, four or five months of the year, I'm just before Christmas. I was solid in, in my studio mixing, mm. so I am so, um, you know, I I I think what uh, uh, the songs, but I've really no idea. It will take. It's like when we did the punishment to luxury. I really had no idea what we'd done there either. Yeah, it was only sort of four, five, six months after that I. I could actually listen to it and go and actually hear the songs rather than the constituent uh, constituent parts, you know. So, um, so, but I think we've done something good. I, I well, I think it's uh, the chart is testament to that, which you know, it's um, it's an indicator, right? But I just think it's um, it's remarkable that you know you must pinch yourselves certain days where you're going, you know, you, you wanted to do this record, you had the motivation behind wanting to do it, but to have it so well received. Um, must be glorious uh, confirmation that uh, you're still worthy. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it, it is it is nice. I mean, it's uh, it's you, we when we got together, we um, you know, we were playing songs. You know, we we're playing like uh, concerts with playing our full albums. We did we played the whole of Architectionality. We helped play yeah. the whole Dazzle Ships and stuff, which was great fun to sort of sort of revisit all our catalogue and then after a few years in we went well is this it then are we are we are we becoming a pastiche of ourselves are we a tribute band to omd mm. or 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 thing to say and and so we started uh, you know because you know we don't mind all this nostalgia stuff and you mm. know we 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 do a lot of nostalgia festivals around the world and and because we're proud you know yeah. And providing a service for people who want to hear all of those all the songs 
but there's a side to us that wants to still move the band forward yeah you know, and uh and not just be stuck in the past and yeah. and so we we did sort of dare each other as we've done in the past we dare each other to do things we dared each other to to sort of start writing together again <laughs> to see what we could come up with and uh fourth album in and the sort of new incarnation of the band. and uh, which has lasted like 17 years we've been <laughs> <laughs> we've been back together again. longer than most marriages but Paul we started up again and yeah. um and it's been fun you know it's been fun and it should be. I think it absolutely should be. But Paul, I'm going to let you go. Um, I could talk to you for days, as I always, as I said to Andy as well. But um, thank you so much. And we look forward to experiencing the new album. And then, yes, being all nostalgic and crying into our face um, in a good way. But thank you. <laughs> I, I, hope to, I hope to see you. Which show are you going to come to, if you can? I'll be at the Cape Town show. Hector, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah I look we'll try and get back to say hi. I will. I'll I'll fight with uh, with with Damon and the team and see, see if it's possible. <laughs> but thank you so much, Paul, and all the best. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mal. You take care, Jason. Yeah, you too, huh?